self-portrait. That girl, she's not me, but I remember her. It seems as though I painted those lashes just yesterday. No lower lashes, just upper lashes, and look at those teeth. She's an odd thing. It's like I've screamed at her hair, at those curls so unruly, too, ang too angry to properly relax. Thank God I'm not her. She's an odd thing, that girl. She's not me, but I swear I knew her once, but only see her in passing these days. I remember her. She's an odd thing, like a freckle on a palm or an extra toe or two. Thank God I'm not her. I probably couldn't take it. I would probably beg life, stop being so mean. Poor girl. She's such an odd thing. Kansan girls. It's every Kansan girl's dream to fly away like Amelia did and just get the hell out and find some place exciting to rest her lovely ancient bones when the dreaming is done. And can you blame her? It could have happened to you. And did you know that every Kansan girl has been choked? There's still a Bible belt tied around her neck since birth. And by God, she calls her cross a necklace now. And oh God, what were they thinking, letting her leave the house like that? Has she no shame, this girl? Has she no respect? And near her folks' simple home, there are prayers growing like weeds from the ditches, and they grow wildly discarded, like the empty beer cans her Marlboro smoking boyfriend always chucked out of his Chevy pickup truck. And he'd drink and chuck and drink and smoke along those little dirt roads leading straight to nowhere, in no place. And she'd let the wind pull her hair out to the window, and she'd navigate her hand through the current, half praying that it would take her to heaven. And she'd prop her bare toes on the dashboard, eyes closed, dreaming with the static on the radio. And can you blame her? It could have happened to you. And every Kansan girl's the same, a little shy, but all, but all insane. But they always make their daddies proud, and they always prove that they are stronger than their mothers and their mothers' mothers. And with luck, these girls discover climbing trees before it's too late, before they're too scared to see the consequence of heights and gravity. And it could happen. It could happen to you. And every Kansan girl has cut her lips on a blade of prairie grass, trying to make it whistle like a vertical harmonica. And she walks barefoot all summer long, soles like leather treading on down the road for an ice cream cone, passing carved initials in the lonely prairie timber. And she used to bake the mud pies under the fire of the sky. And she used to hunt the lightning bugs and the crickets like they were jungle beasts. But the roly polies were her friends, and the roly polies had their names, although every bug dies in jars just the same. What a shame. And she has seen the sky turn green and heard silence echoing, echoing. And she remembers the weariness of neighbors as they begin poking onto porches, waiting. And she has heard the sirens sound their warnings, warnings. And she has raced into the center of the street, wearing cut-off shorts and a nighty shirt just to watch the sky start spinning, spinning. And she has drowned in the glowing ocean of the moonlight, coughing up her wishes and her childhood and her days. And she still thinks that bruises are pretty. And she still scatters hair clippings on the lawn. And she's still stubborn and eager and feisty and fragile. And she was born the rustic color of American beautiful. And she's still here. On the front porch swing, popping off the ends of green beans for supper. And she's so tired. Tired of dreaming herself to death. But regardless of this, and never mind that, Amelia had the right idea of flying away and away. And can you blame her? Being born this Kansan, Kansan girl. Can you blame her? This could have happened to anyone. Classic cherry. I'm going old school. <laughs> My last poem. It's called Jimbo's Tattoo. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> Because it is Tuesday, I wait. 
without eagerness or vigor for the electric zapping of my waxy muse, with her tentacles reaching, stretching from her mouth, plunging into my mind sockets, recharging creative circuits, freezing my veins and vices. She's some kind of demon, my muse, some kind of wicked or rotten creature I would not, I don't want to need. I don't want to be this vessel, the shell. I want creation to spew from my, from my loins, spill onto the floor of my new suede shoes. I want to feel creation between my toes when I give birth to a poem. Only then can I breathe, knowing I did it on my own. And I would set fire to my muse if I didn't fear her ungodly rage. But why would I want to?